we are confronted with the age-old problem body temperature. Is the mean body temperature of healthy adults actually 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, an old study once said it was, but a lot of people say that was a bad study and that it's not true, so I'm going to try my own study. I have collected 81 patients, 81 people, actually, who are not unhealthy. They are healthy, they are non-feverish people, and I have taken their body temperature with a very precise thermometer. So I have 81 body temperatures listed in column C1. I would like to test the claim that the mean body temperature of people is not 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. I believe that the old claim is wrong. So the claim that I want to test is that the mean body temperature of non-febrile people is not 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that claim, is that a null or is that an alternative? Well, since it says is not, that's a not equals. This is an alternative. So my original claim is actually an alternative. Remember, when I do a hypothesis test, I'm going to need both of my, al my alternative and null hypothesis, and I'm going to need my significance. All right, so here, this time it's a mean. I'm looking for the mean. So I'm going to say mean not equal 98.6. Well, now I also have to have a null. The null, of course, is going to be the same hypothesis, except I'll replace it with an equal. Mean equal 98.6. Great. And our significance, shall we work at 95% confidence? Why not? So we're going to work at 0 0.05 significance. All right. Now we're ready in Minitab. In Minitab, we're going to go to Stat, Basic Statistics. And this time, I'm working with one mean. Now remember, when we use a mean and we don't know the true population standard deviation, which we really in real life never do, if we don't know the mean, we don't know the standard deviation, then we're going to do a one sample t. We use the t distribution when we don't know the true population standard deviation, which is always the case. So for means, just think of means, you're going to use a t. I have one sample, so I'm going to do one sample t. All right, so now here I actually do have my data in a column, so that's great. I'm going to leave it at this. I could use summarized data if I didn't. You can see I have the other choice there, but I'm going to leave it as it is. And then I'm going to tell it, I clicked in this box here, and I'll tell it which column it is that I have my data in by double-clicking body temp. I'll now click in the box next to perform hypothesis test because I'm not doing parameter estimation, I'm doing a hypothesis test. And what's the hypothesized mean? Well, the hypothesized mean comes from my null hypothesis, which is 98.6. Click on my options. The confidence level is 95. Excellent, that's what I wanted. My alternative hypothesis is not equal. Excellent, that's what I wanted. And I'm going to say OK. And then I'll say OK. And you're going to see Minitab has done many results for me. It's told me I had 81 data values. It told me what the mean and the standard deviation of those data values was. It gave me a 95% confidence interval. It gave me the t-score, which is called my test statistic, but it also gave me the p-value, and I can actually make my decision based on the p-value. The p-value is 0 compared to the significance of 0 0.05. The p is low. The null must go. I'm a, I should point out, the p-value is not actually zero. Out to three decimal places, it's zero. But somewhere out there, there's got to be a number. It isn't actually zero, but it's very, very small. So the p is low, the null must go. I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. And since my original claim was the alternative, that also means I can accept the alternative. Remember, I can never accept a null, but I can accept an alternative hypothesis. So my conclusion is there is sufficient evidence that the, or to, we'll say to warrant the claim, that the mean body temperature of non-febrile people is not 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Excellent.